This video will go over the principles of applying a modified Robert Jones bandage. In this video, you can see us applying a modified Robert Jones bandage on a post-operative patient. This patient doesn't actually have a wound, just an incision, but the bandaging principles remain the same. The first layer of a modified Robert Jones bandage is the primary or contact layer. The primary or contact layer usually consists of a telfa abdominal pad or even alginate. At this stage in the bandage, topical antimicrobial therapy can be applied, and this can be as simple as honey or triple antibiotic ointment. These antimicrobial therapies should be applied sterilely along with the primary or contact layer. The secondary layer of a modified Robert Jones bandage consists of cast padding and conform gauze. These layers provide compression to the bandage, so it's important that they are applied properly. These layers will be applied distally to proximally on the patient's limb. Cast padding cannot be applied too tightly, otherwise it'll just rip. But conform gauze can be applied too tightly, so it is important to only tighten the conform gauze in one direction. And each layer should overlap the previous layer about 50%. The tertiary layer of a modified Robert Jones bandage is a self-adherent bandaging tape, which most of the time we use vet wrap. This layer can be applied too tightly, so it is important to maintain appropriate tension when placing it on the bandage. It is important to keep the toes exposed throughout bandaging so that owners can monitor swelling and make sure that the bandage has not slipped once the patient has been discharged. If strike through is noticed on a bandage, it should be changed immediately.